Hey everyone, Judge right here. Happy Saturday, I guess it is, huh? Day 46. Good thing you told me. I never know it. Tongue tied. I never know what day it is. It's, it's Even though I do this every day, I never know. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know. My brain doesn't really work that way. It's weird. You know, certain things. Like, I, um, time it, I, is <laughs> so out there to me. Like, I'm always super punctual. Like, I'm obsessed with being on time. But then once I'm on time, then, like, later if I'm going to think about, like, how long something's been or remember a date or something like that. I'm terrible. We made our anniversary January 1st so that I wouldn't forget our wedding anniversary. <laughs> so bad with that. I can't remember the day that we, our first okay, anniversary. Okay, so here's the deal today. Yeah. Is that um, 16 workers at Al Giant now, that doubled in three days. 16. 16 workers tested positive at the Raiders Stadium site, um, which is probably even more than that. But here's the thing. Uh, this is not a deadly virus, okay? This is the biggest thing coming out today. So the CDC came out today saying that this is a regular flu virus, you guys. So you don't have to listen to me. Is that not working? Keep talking. Okay. Um, you do not have to listen to me. This is coming now for the, from the Center for Disease Control. The CDC said all the numbers are coming out. This is a regular flu virus. You guys go check that out for yourselves. That's from them, the CDC. And... They're also finding that the numbers of actual corona flu no, virus... No, I'll come back on this one. This sounds okay. really awful. Okay. We're having technical issues. We're having technical issues today. So, I don't know what's... Stand by. Stand by, everyone. Okay, so what are you going to talk about? Day... 46. 46. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sound should be back on. Are we live? Yeah, live. Oh, okay. Everyone, uh, I think we fixed the sound issue. It was a volume issue. <laughs> so, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. You can hear me good now, right? Jared? Yes. Okay, we're good. Okay, cool. So, what's going on? So, day 46 here, um, the CDC just declared, and the CDC is the Center for Drug Control. They just declared that this is a regular flu virus. The numbers are coming in. It's even lower than a regular flu virus. So you guys can go check that out. So it's not just me saying this now. This is the CDC saying this. And guess what else they found out? That the numbers, of course, they were exaggerating them. And one of the things they were doing is they were counting everyone that had pneumonia in the coronavirus. Like if someone was already very ill and already had pneumonia, and then they got the coronavirus, but they were already going to die from the pneumonia, they counted it a coronavirus death. So when they took out the ones of the people that already were dying from pneumonia, it's only 37,000 deaths in the U.S., so way less than even the regular flu virus, which is around 50,000. So you guys, we did all the shutdown and everything for no reason. And guess what else? <coughs> Excuse me. There's my, my, when you do a bong later, you get like this cough afterwards. <laughs> it's funny. Um, 16 workers now confirmed have tested positive at the Raiders Stadium, which Governor Sislek allowed construction to continue the whole time. So if this was a deadly virus, we all would have been contaminated in Nevada no matter how long they keep Vegas shut down. So it was not a deadly virus. It was not a super contagious virus like they're acting like. It was a regular flu virus. It was just as contagious as the regular flu virus is. So... So that's that. Big deal, you know. That's that. So bottom line is we stopped everything for nothing. But the, here's the funny thing is, is that even though all these facts, there's still people that still scream, oh my God, we have to stay home. We have to stay safe. Right. That's why I'm frustrated. I almost didn't even want to do a blog today because I'm so frustrated that even after all these things coming out, we got the CDC coming out saying it. We got um, Elon Musk going nuts about all this. Um, we got... The governor's allowing things like construction where the workers were 16 workers as a positive and then they act like it's a deadly virus. How can you say it's a deadly virus but allow construction to continue when worker after worker is testing positive? If it was a deadly virus, then shut down construction, especially when they've had workers test positive. But they knew it wasn't deadly. That's why they allowed construction to continue. And you say, well, why would they sabotage their own states? Well, they're trying to take Trump down. They need a Democrat in office in the next um, term. That, but also, it's, it's also this other weird thing, too. It's like, I don't know Vegas politics here, 
But doesn't it seem like everyone here is kind of against everyone else? Like they don't really work together. Right. Like, I mean, Wynn's trying to take down Venetia. Venetia's trying to take down MJ. So here, we, nothing's opening. I mean, Steve is, he's the Mr. Oh, nobody's opening shit until Yeah, none I say of the so. casinos are even planning on opening anytime soon. It's, it's insane. I don't even know. It's such a nightmare, you guys. And it's all for a regular, less than a regular flu virus. Less people have died than the regular flu virus that comes around every year. So if you're still wearing your mask, you need to wake up, take the stupid thing off. It's cutting off the oxygen Reach in your on. brain. Vegas is run by the mob. Yeah, well, actually, Vegas was almost better when it was run by the mob. Now it's run by just greedy corporations that have greedy stockholders that want more and more. That Each year they want 10% increase on their shares, so they keep having to ch- uh, chintz things and charge more, but chintz the product, you know, like rip off the customers and then keep uh, cheapening the product every time they do remodels it's cheaper and cheaper stuff it's because the shareholders so whenever you have a big company um the shareholders are what start to sabotage it because they want to see more returns each year. Just having the same as last year is not good enough. Well, not every company can increase by 10% every year. You either have to increase your sales or you have to cut your costs. And so either you cheapen your product or you get 10% more customers. And it's very hard to get 10% more customers every single year. So if, most companies cheapen their product. And to your point, someone said, if, if, for you, Blue said, if the mob was running Vegas, it'd be up and running. Today. It would have never shut down. This is absolutely insane. They would have not allow, allowed a Catholic dickhead to shut down Vegas. The guy is Catholic. He wait, goes. Wait, explain it because people aren't from Nevada. They don't okay, listen know to this. Anything. Governor Sislik is, is, is the is the Nevada governor, and he is a devout Catholic. And he went and asked twenty bishops what their advice was of when he should open Sin City and if ever. And what do you think they said? Why do you think we're closed for 60 days for no reason? They don't ever want Vegas to open. Right. When they and 60 about- days is enough to destroy Vegas. Yeah. It's going to be very hard to recover. So this is really insane. Um, and he is Catholic, so if that... if. You guys don't realize the significance of that. This is Sin City. This is like anti-Catholic everything here. So the Catholic Church does not want Sin City to exist. This is where you're allowed to basically drink to any level. You're allowed to do drugs and hire hookers and party and stuff. All that is not what the church wants. Um, And you can get, you know, this is where divorce kind of started. And Nevada was one of the first states that allowed divorce and things like that. So... The Catholic Church doesn't want this place, and they want it. If they, what they want it to be is become family friendly right Disneyland. Point, right point. Catholicism, if you look at it, is really a lot of socialism. Because think about Catholic charities, Catholic, all these things they do. Someone just comment. Right, and you know what's funny is um, people are start pro- are starting to protest. They want the churches open, and I was uh, laughing at Jairus because they're like, the churches must be pissed because they are losing a fortune because they can't get their tithing from people every Sunday. Because I guarantee people. <laughs> go back on their tithe into the church um, which good don't fucking pay the church it's ridiculous thank you for preaching the truth oh you're welcome I grew up in, in the church and, I, and I've, I've had a lot of experiences so I'm only telling you guys from being in certain experiences and now um, being on the other side and that's why I say and people oh you don't know oh really I was like the ultimate church goer and oh, things God. like this so my parents were youth pastors and we're we, still trying to beat it out of her I know. We, I we had I'd be at a church about four days a week, four to five days a week uh, with all the things my mom did. We were at church functions because she did two youth groups, um, and then she did Bible studies and women's groups. And she uh, on a Sunday we had to go and Saturday, so we were lucky if we some weeks we went seven days a week. It just depended. So um, and I went to a Christian school growing up, so I know all about religion. And I'm telling you guys, it's bullshit. <laughs> that what our society has been taken over by religion too and now we think things like sex is bad which is a regular thing in nature and we've made we've demonized it and we act like it's this awful thing and um and now we're demonizing a flu virus see all people can get on these um they like your natural look today oh thank you yeah, I just took a bath and my hair is kind of a wreck, so thank you. I was a little bit embarrassed, but I was like, oh well. Because when I don't, when I uh, 
my hair gets really frizzy. I have to brush it to get it from. I don't blow dry my hair anymore. Hey, and, and that's a good thing for. I should I should say that for good advice for anyone during this quarantine. I should have said this from the beginning. You should not blow dry your hair during this time, and really ever if you can get over it. But it's tough because I know it's more attractive usually when you but what I do is I let my hair dry naturally and then if I really need to do something I'll straighten it a little bit which I know that's not good for it either but it's way better than blow drying I found leaving out the blow dryer did immense um, progress on my hair because it was way worse a couple years ago uh, so ladies during the quarantine don't blow dry your hair seriously let it dry naturally even if you have frizzy hair like me and then worst case after it's dry you can straighten it if it really is bugging you a little bit for a style but blow dryers the other thing is there really a lot of heat on your head you and it's the reality gives, very well it gives you headaches and stuff too it's crazy Jared always noticed that I got really irritable after blow drying my hair because it makes sense you're blowing like 400 degree heat on your head for about you know, 30 minutes and you end up sweat it's just not fun but during the quarantine let your hair go natural um anyway so well, I'm frustrated because all of the numbers are coming out that this is a regular flu virus and there's still people believing that what we did was necessary and that what we're still doing is necessary that like we still need to keep Vegas closed and that I'm just like I want to rip uh, my hair blue out Blue's gonna take off we'll be here tomorrow thanks for you Blue thank you guys I want to pull my hair out over this that's why sometimes I, I this morning I didn't even want to do a blog because I'm feeling so frustrated that people are not paying attention to the facts like the numbers are coming out from even the CDC and they're still not paying attention and then we got people like Elon Musk screaming to everyone and they're like calling Elon Musk names saying the funniest thing I heard was you morons stick to rocket science I thought well oh, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard <laughs> that, that is too much too much um I'm like, wow, at least I don't feel as bad for getting made fun of when I see Elon Musk getting attacked, uh, you know, because, like, people are calling me all kinds of things for saying that this was a regular flu virus, and then I'm like, jeez, if they even attack him, I mean, the guy's a genius. Someone He's, said pulling your hair out is actually better for you than blow-drying your hair. Yeah, uh, probably, you, you know, you're exactly right, because the thing is... Uh, Blow drying is, I, I, I didn't even realize, I thought it was all styling, and I realized just taking out the blow dryer was the biggest issue, and then of course, curling and straightening is not good, but it's way better than the blow drying. I found that if you took out the blow drying, um, the other two are not nearly as bad on your hair, but you know, of course it'd be best to not do any kind of heat product on your hair. But you know, my hair is kind of frizzy, sometimes I like to straighten it a little bit. Um, but yeah, the blow dryer, it was insane. I, I felt so much better getting rid of the blow dryer, and I, I, I refuse now. Like, I will not blow dry my hair. Once you stop doing it, I did it one time after, and I was like, you could just tell the difference. Your hair get comes so coarse, too. It's so much softer if you let it dry naturally. But anyways, enough about the hair. But, you guys, I'm really hoping that people start to open up their eyes to what's going on because if you are still believing the government has your best interest then you're not doing yourself any favors because they don't have, they have the best interest of themselves and their families and that's really how everyone is at the end of the day I mean we really care about ourselves and our family bottom line more than anyone else I mean it goes you know our our people over you know that's generally everyone's that way but so then you have to know they're going to be making decisions for their family so when you think oh they're doing it for the live no no they're not i mean they're always going to be thinking and and not that that's a bad thing but most of these politicians don't even think past that they only care about their family and getting richer and richer and most of them are billionaires and that's weird too it didn't used to be that way it didn't used to be that politicians were billionaires and that's really a conflict of interest i would think now because um how much can they be caring about the country when they're just getting paid off basically i mean these guys are being paid so much by pharmaceutical companies and stuff is one of the worst things um and pharmaceutical companies 
our our bad news, you guys. Now that we have weed becoming legal in more and more states, you really need to broaden your horizons if you haven't considered weed because it is so beneficial to you. And you don't have to smoke it. People, you know, don't like smoking. You don't even have to get stoned. You can just do the CBDs, which are the cannabinoids. That's the healing part of weed. They give it to children. They're finding that they're giving it to children with seizures. They're finding. Um, I my doctor told me this kid had came in. He was having two hundred seizures a day, and all they did was give him the CBD droplets. It doesn't make you stoned. It's just the medicine. The kid had zero seizures after a couple months, and um, that we're seeing stuff like that all the time. And so. CBDs are becoming more and more legal too in more states, but the this reason is socialism is born. Yeah, the reason why the pharmaceutical companies never wanted weed legal is because it would put them out of business if people actually realize what weed can do. Because here's the deal: when you actually realize how beneficial weed is, you don't need any other medicine. You don't even need vitamins because you can get everything from if you eat right and from mineral water and from weed. So you can cut out anything that a pharmaceutical company sells, which pharmaceutical companies are the pretty much the biggest industry in the world right now. Um, they're the ones that pay for most of the, um, the campaigns are funded by the um, pharmaceutical companies for all of them, Republicans and Democrats. So do you put makeup on in the morning or is it, they, it looks natural? They look oh, right now I have a little bit of um, eye like makeup it. on. Like but I, this is all I ever wear. Um, I, I, I did a makeup scope uh, a little ways back. I only do, I don't do any face makeup ever. Like um, the foundation, never. Not even for a photo shoot. I refuse because I don't like what it does to your skin. I don't like how it clogs your pores. Even if it's just for a photo shoot now afterwards you're gonna have clogged pores you're gonna break out more like so I, w I don't put it on my face I just get some of like, please put a little bit just with the, look oily or whatever say, no not putting it on there sorry it can look bad I'm not gonna do it and um, I found because I used to have bad worse skin and then when I stopped putting the foundation, it started to clear up. But it was hard at first because, of course, you have, like, a little bit of zits and things, you know, or whatever your blemishes that you're insecure about. But if you just work through them and realize that they are more obvious to you than to anyone else, and the more you cover them up, the more obvious they become. But if you just leave a little bit of red, most people don't even notice, but they think, oh, God, I got this red thing. I need to cover it. Or but most people won't even notice, and it'll go away quicker than if you mess with it or cover it. So I don't don't put the face makeup and then the only thing I wear is um, eyeshadow eyeliner and mascara and very simple cheap stuff I use um, Revlon color stay eyeliner which is um, I get it online for uh, six dollars but usually at the store it's around ten dollars but if you get on Amazon it's like six dollars and then I use Maybelline eyeshadow which they're like two dollars I get them on Amazon. I use like three different colors, and then I do um, a mascara that's like I get it for seven dollars. It's Maybelline on Amazon. So my makeup, it, my whole makeup bag, I have a, a tiny one. Everything in there is probably you know thirty to fifty dollars for the whole thing, and that's all I ever do. And I've never worn more makeup. I re I refuse. People put it on me, and I look like a clown. It's really funny, Jared. <laughs> He's like, okay, I get it, why you don't do it. It just, everyone always thinks that, oh, well, I'll make you look so much prettier. Let me put all this makeup on you. And we had the, we had a girlfriend, Cassie, and she was all about makeup. Uh, this was in 2016. She lived with us. She wore so much makeup, and she was all about buying makeup. Oh, my gosh, I spent so much money on her for makeup. I couldn't believe it. We'd go to Sephora. She'd spend, like, $400 on makeup. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. But <laughs> I would be like, girl. Gee Louise. But um, anyways, um, she did my makeup one day. It was awful. It was so, I was, Jared, was it not bad? Bad. It, I, did I look like a clown? And she was good at makeup. It's not like. You look pretty good in the photos, though. In f but man. But in person, it looked a little weird. I look weird. I don't know why. I'm just kind of like a tomboy. <laughs> well, I was in the. Yeah, it did look pretty weird. <laughs> I was in the military. And, uh,. You know, I'm an athlete and stuff, and I just, I'm a tomboy, yeah. So, me with a ton of makeup. Even though in my job, it's funny, because I got to get a little bit dressed up, but I, it's mild. I am very used to wearing heels now, though. That took me a minute. I could not wear a heel a couple years ago. Now I can wear some stellar heels. Any height, it don't, it don't bother me now. But a couple years ago, oh gosh, I would buy like the... Remember when we went and I tried to get the smallest heels I could find because I, I could not walk in heels. It was terrible. But you get used to it. But anyways, um... 
thank you for the comments. I really like to keep it light on the makeup. I, I don't like heavy makeup. I don't like to do a lot of stuff. I don't um, really do much with my hair in the sense that I don't get it done. I've actually been cutting my own hair for a long time, which <laughs> it doesn't look as good. But everyone's been cutting it, you know, just since this quarantine. I've been doing it for a while because I hate going to the salon. I absolutely hate you going to the salon. You cut my hair all the time. And I cut Jarvis's hair. Hey, would you guys want to see her dye my hair on Periscope? Yeah, we need to dye. Would that be something interesting to see Dubon? We have had some hair dye. The problem is a bunch of his hair is going to fall out, so I haven't done it yet. He keeps wanting me to do it, but he wants it bleached, and, I, and his hair falls out when I do that. Yeah. So then he gets mad at me. So he begs me forever to do his hair, and then he's mad at me for like a week after I do it. So I, I say, I don't want to do it. I don't want to oh, do it. Oh, that was one time. He was so mad. Yes. Another time he yeah, got, time. he he stopped brushing his hair. He thought he wanted to do dreads, and then they just got turned into just knots. And I'm like, well... If you want dreads, but they're just gonna be that, who's <laughs> not? I didn't know. <laughs> How am I supposed to know? So I had to cut him out, and he was so mad. Why? Well, because they were beyond. They couldn't. He had just let it become just knots. This is just a mound of knots. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I want to dye my hair, but it always just falls out when you dye it. That's why I don't like dyeing. I, I don't like that. It fries it. So, I don't know, we'll see. But it's getting so dark, and I like it a little lighter. But I haven't dyed it in a long time, a couple years. So, I just am frustrated because I want people to realize that this is a regular flu virus. And the numbers are coming out, even from the CDC. And Elon Musk is going nuts. So, um, we go, oh, who's Elon Musk? Who cares? Well, for one thing, he's a super intelligent guy. I mean, he created Tesla and, um, oh, what is that another one called? The space, what is it called? SpaceX. SpaceX. And then he's, I'm going to, they want, they've been working on this underground tunnel that's going to go from L.A. to here. It'd be like a really quick way to get from Vegas to L.A. They were working on that, but who knows now with everything going on. But, um. He's always doing like such forward, and then he <laughs> shot that car into space. Do you guys remember that? That was pretty cool. Um, and what was he playing? Some David Bowie song, I think. <laughs> and so he's an intelligent person. So if he is saying that this is a hoax, we go, oh, he's not a doctor. It don't matter. It, it, all it takes is a brain. And you all have one too. And all you have to do is look at the facts. But I'm glad someone with like some actual clout and followers and, and you know um, he's got a lot of followers is actually saying something other than most of the celebrities are saying quarantine yourself and this and that oh, which is such a sham Let's and I know that. all of them which and they got Let's well like that. Miley Cyrus um um, uh, it, Justin Bieber, all the all the ones, all the music ones. Um, uh, what's her name? Jessica Alba. All the ones that I see I on um, TikTok. Um, J Lo and are you um, kidding me right now? all those ones are on TikTok are telling telling everyone to self quarantine. And always on there. Derek Hugh, J Lo, uh, J Rod. What was A Rod? J Rod, A Rod. Whatever J Lo's guy's name is, A Rod. Um, uh, all of those ones. I'm trying to remember Tyga. Anyone who's on TikTok, they're they're encouraging the self quarantine. They're doing that. They're going, oh, here's me self quarantining, and they're getting, putting their masks on and stuff. Which, you guys, it's fun for the celebs. They have tons of money. It's all right if everything shuts down forever for them. It's kind of a joke to them. We're the ones that are losing everything. That we are two weeks now behind on rent. And luckily here, they're well, they're not allowed to kick people out, but they're also being very cool here. But you know. We're, we have to make that up, otherwise, come the end of this, we'll be kicked out once that time is up. And we've been trying to s stay current, and we just got behind because it's just been so hard. And um, we went, the other day, we went, like, the, almost all day without eating or having weed because we were so broke. It was such a rough day. Remember that, Judge? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We went till like, 3 p.m. before we were able to get some food or weed, um, and we were starving, but we, I, I wasn't able to get it until we worked, and then I was like, you know, this is how most people should be feeling right now, but instead, people um, are living on credit, 
and stuff and they're living this artificial reality like everything's going to be okay but in reality you should be feeling like hungry because it should be like wow I really don't know where my next meal is coming especially if you lost your job and so me and Jet Rich we get hit first because we don't have credit of any sort they won't give us any and not that we want any because I don't like that um but um so everything is just you know what we can afford on a day-to-day basis we're never um Uh, leveraging ourselves beyond our means which is a really good situation for right now but it's also scary because that means we have nothing I mean when we don't have uh, when we run out, that means we don't have any money. Like, we take it to the last. I, I take the ch- my change all the time to Walmart, and that's, like, the end of the barrel. I mean, we're, like, we even overdraft our account sometimes, and then, which is the worst when it happens when you already don't have money, and then you start getting all those fees, and what, they'll give you a couple of them back if you call, but not most of them. And that's happened to us before. It's the worst. You're like, oh, I'm already broke, and now I had one thing that I miscounted for, and it came through, and it overdrafted, and then it's $17, dollars or thirty five dollars whatever the thirty five dollars I think it is actually they'll sometimes give you a credit and only charge seventeen if you call them once in a while um but so but we actually prefer living that way because we're so much more in tune with reality and with nature and with the universe and right now if you're living lavishly then you're not really in reality because right now is a time of um everyone needs to cut back because it if you are living lavishly it's almost a slap in the face to all the people that are not you know doing well right now and that's a huge portion of at least the u.s you know i don't know how other countries are doing right now i don't know how much they've been recovering from this um i know a lot of them are back to normal the u.s took it way more extreme than any other country we jumped on this and just went like wildfire on social media and now they're finding the numbers are so low 37,000 deaths because if you take out the people that were already dying from pneumonia so they were counting all of those ones and um they had to right away just take out the pneumonia ones and then there's other ones too like you said there's other categories where they're counting if you just were affected and then recovered but then anything happened like an automobile accident they were still counting that as a corona death and they just separated the pneumonia pneumonia ones and found out it went from 60,000 to 37,000 just taking out the pneumonia cases so those people were already like on their deathbed it was people that were already very ill and then got pneumonia not just like the healthy that got pneumonia it was like someone who was already very ill and when you're already very ill pneumonia can kill you um the common cold can kill you any virus can kill you and that's who's dying from this flu virus people say oh there's no cure to there's never a cure for viruses the way you cure a virus is you get it and then you get an immunity to it and the way you either get it is by you know getting it from someone else or they give you a flu shot and that they actually inject you with the virus a small dose of the virus and then your body builds immunity to it i think there is a fly stuck on the inside of my light the poor buddy i don't even know how he managed to get himself in there he's in there's like this cover thing hey buddy get out of here get out of here little fella there we go oh he oh gee he's so happy <laughs> he was stuck on the inside anyways um he got stuck because it has like this little cover plastic cover thing and i don't even know how he got himself in there okay so um yeah, it's frustrating because I think people don't want to admit they're wrong. And so they are just they just keep continuing going down this road because if they were to admit they're wrong, then people would be really upset because it's like, what? You shut down the whole US, U.S. and especially Nevada uh, for nothing. Yeah, and that's the truth, you guys, for nothing. For a regular flu virus that killed less than the number of deaths from a regular flu virus so even less severe than a regular flu virus and this is just insane and uh, elon musk has been saying you know it's not even uh it's against the constitution uh for these governors to tell us that we have to stay home they say that's against our constitutional rights so they're gonna force us to stay home so the, i think revolution is coming you guys and you need to be on the right side of this because I wouldn't want to be on the side where you're still thinking this is a deadly flu virus. Because for one thing, the longer you stay on that side, the stupider you're going to look at the end. 
<coughs> because the like sooner you you jump over to the other side or you realize you're on the sinking ship, then you can help yourself and you can um, you know find solutions. But if you continue to think everything's hunky dory and the government has your best interest and oh they'll just give us another stimulus check and everything will be just hunky dory. That's not true. And also, just making funny money is not a good idea either. Our country is in trillions of dollars of debt, and all they did was just print more money to give you guys all these stimulus checks. And I, we are not part of that. We don't qualify for that. Thank goodness I don't want their money, to be honest. I don't, I don't want the government's money because I don't agree with what they do, so I don't want to be part of their system. Um, and... The way I contribute is by, with my weed, I pay my state taxes that way. Because we don't even have a state tax here in Nevada. So we contribute that way. And I thought it was going to education. Turns out Governor Sislek is just buying himself private jets. So I'm very frustrated about that. But hopefully that gets resolved. I guess the teachers have already been on strike from last year. So I don't know. It doesn't look good. But the weed money was supposed to go to education here because um, Nevada has some of the worst education the schooling in the country. Um, I'm luckily from California. I didn't get educated here, but I hear it's really bad. And that's another reason why um, it was just another reason why I know Governor Sislek is just not a good person. I mean, we've had so many things. People here in Nevada do not like him. And now he is acting like what he did was like for our health while he allowed construction to continue the entire time. 16 workers tested positive now that we know for sure, which is probably way more than that. You realize like that's the ones that have come out that we know for sure and they've been trying to squash any more. So 16 that they can't squash now have come out tested positive and they're not dying. They're recovering, you guys. So I mean, oh God, see, so no, they're recovering. Some of them have already gone back to work. But it just shows that if it really were a deadly virus, it would have spread. And Governor Sislek's plan to shut everything except for construction? Great. So we would have all got it from all of these workers that are still continuing. He didn't even, even make any stipulations against their work. It was like they could just go carry on as normal. It's insane, and um, every site, every construction site had workers test positive. The uh, resort world had to actually, they decided to shut down for a minute and, you know, wipe their place because they were having so many workers uh, testing positive. But by their choice, still not even the government didn't even shut them down, even after all these workers. So I knew that Governor Sislek knew it wasn't a deadly virus. Because if he thought it was deadly virus, then that means he does not care about any construction worker's life because he allowed them to continue when worker after worker was testing positive. So you gotta ask yourself, does he not care about construction workers' lives or did he know it wasn't a deadly virus? Those are your two options. There's no other option. Because if, let's say, okay, let's say at first he said, let's have construction for whatever reason. And you say, oh, because, you know, we'll be safe. After one worker tested positive, you should have said, well, construction is no longer safe. Look, it's corrupted now. The, the site has been contaminated. So shut it down. But no, they didn't. Mm -mm. They let worker after worker after worker. But here's the thing. It's a virus you can recover from, you guys. So I was happy they left construction open. I did not want construction taken down. I wanted the opposite. I wanted everything else opened. This is day 46 now. And they're talking at least 60 days, because 15 more days. And then they're saying they have no idea even when the casinos are opening. They're not even opening on May 15th. No idea, they say. They say they're taking reservations, but they have no idea. So you can make a reservation and then hope they might be open. And if not, you know, obviously it gets canceled. And this is because of Governor Sislek. It's not the casinos now can't open because there's no one here. Do you get what I'm saying? The casinos want to open once they're allowed to, but they can't because Governor Sislek kicked out tourists on St. Patty's Day. Kicked them out of their hotels. I was there, you guys. He kicked people out to the street. They had to either 
kick the, to the curb or go to the um, airport. There was no hotel they could stay at. There was nothing. He kicked out tourists on St. Patty's Day. I had a client that was here for his 21st birthday, first time in Vegas. He first was at an MGM property. He was staying at Mandalay Bay. MGM first closed their properties the one night, and they, they scooted him over to Caesars. He got a new reservation at Caesars, and they were like, ooh, Caesars was going to stay open. Cool. He stayed there for two days. I go to see him again. St. Patty's Day. They kick him and say, Figure it out. I don't care. Figure it out. He was supposed to be here for a whole nother week for his 21st birthday. He was mortified. And that's what they did to all these people. And then and then they scared the crap out of them, telling them there's a deadly virus. And so you think we're going to have tourists come back anytime soon? So the casinos can't open when there's no tourists. So Governor Sislek destroyed Sin City. And that's what he wanted to do with him and his 20 bishop friends and the Catholic Church. That's why it's an issue when the governor of Nevada is a devout Catholic, when he's governor over Sin City. That's an issue. Because he's happy the casinos are closed. Good. Can't have the debauchery of the gambling and and sex and drugs and alcohol. Good. Hmm. Hmm. Better for me. Make it Disneyland. He's excited about it. He wanted. He wants it to be just where you just bring all these sports teams and it's in it, you know, amusement parks and stuff. He wants to be Wisconsin again. He's from Wisconsin, the Cheesehead, and he wants this to be. He wanted to have the Packers come, but he couldn't get the Packers, so he settled on the Raiders. And then um, that's why he continued to let this go because the Raiders is his little project. And. Even after all the t- workers have tested positive, 16 of them that we know for a fact now, and he just allowed, just continue, still continue, still. They, they, they say, if you can adhere to the six-foot rule, do, but if you can't, you know, it's construction, we understand, and uh, if you want, wear a mask, if you can. If not, no worries. So you can't tell me that Governor Sislek thought this was a deadly virus, so that's why I say it's political. And... It's political by... the and people go, you say you're not political, but all you've been talking about is politics. I know, and it's not by choice. Believe you me, I would rather be doing my regular life that we were doing before, but this became political when they shut down Vegas for political reasons. Then I had to become political, and I don't like this. Believe me, I, don't, I hate talking about politics. I can't stand any of those people. I don't vote. That's how little I care about politics. I've never voted. I didn't even want to learn about it because... I don't like the whole system. I don't like the way we vote. So I said, I don't want anything to do with any of it. And then now I can't avoid it because they shut down my livelihood and they shut down my Vegas. I love this place. And it makes me cry every time I go on the bus. I start bawling because this is sad. If you love Vegas, this is sad. And people go, oh, who cares? You know, there's more importantly. Well, I live here and I love Vegas. And you should love Vegas because it's the place where people go to let loose and enjoy themselves. And if you don't have that, you know, that sucks because everyone needs that once in a while, be it a bachelor party or a bachelorette party or a birthday or whatever it is or a wedding um, or a divorce, whatever. You know, people celebrate all kinds of things here. Um, and that would suck to not have that for adults. We have enough things for kids. We have plenty of amusement parks. We have Orlando, Florida. For the kids, we got, you know, Disney World. We got all the things. We don't need Sin City to be just for the children and for the Catholic Church. This is Sin City. This is supposed to be the one place that you could still do debauchery. And we don't need um, Governor Sislek and his Wisconsin um, ideals coming here and trying to turn this into, uh, you know, this little kitty place of, oh, you know, they started making all these laws like you couldn't have glass bottles on the strip and then they can't feed the pigeons and then illegal to be homeless. And then did you know it was a felony for weed here until it was legal? That's how crazy this place is. It was a felony if you were caught with weed in um, Nevada until they decided to make it legal. These people are nuts here. So it's uh, as much as I love um, 
Sin City, the people here are very corrupt, and I do think this is a reset. Um, it's going to shake out a lot of the crap, a lot of the scammers and the frauds and the people that have been ripping off people and ripping off the tourists for a long time. So in that sense, that'll be good. As a reset, it's going to get rid of a lot of the greed, shake out all the nonsense, but it's still sad to just see um, it destroyed for no reason. If, if I felt that it was valid, that if I saw people were just uh, dropping like flies, but that's not what was happening. The only the very ill are dying, and now the numbers are 37,000 of real COVID deaths in the U.S. Um, the rest are, you, they can't call it that because they already had so many other things like pneumonia. You can't go because they were already ill, had pneumonia, then they got the virus. You're like, well, you can't count that because they were already going to die from the pneumonia. And see, that's where most of the people were at that level. The ones that are actually dying were ones that anything would have killed them in the sense of a common cold, virus, anything. And you say, oh, this one doesn't have a cure. No virus has a cure. I'm so tired of hearing that. And virus have nothing to do with bacteria except for that bacteria can help you fight against viruses. So we have this misconception that get rid of all your bacteria, like with your antibacterial soaps. But you want that good bacteria to fight against viruses. And viruses are not the same as bacteria. So, like, antibiotics don't stop viruses. They stop bacteria. So there is no, like, pill you can take. What they do is they give you the flu shot. They give you the virus, and you get an immunity to it, and then you're not susceptible to it the next year. And that's what they'll do with this one. And that's what they do every year. And next year we'll get a coronavirus shot, and then the next year we'll get another one. And that's just what happens every year but instead this year we dramatized it on social media and we just went nuts and we shut down everything for nothing for nothing and if you believe it was for anything then you're wrong because at the bottom line 37,000 people is not enough to shut down the world for I'm sorry I know it sucks when you lose a loved one I lost a mother and a brother and a bunch of grandparents but still, you don't shut down the world for that. I had to go back to work in two weeks after my mom killed herself and two weeks after my brother died in a motorcycle accident. There was no <laughs> shutting down the world because some people had died. This is out of control. I can't believe we we're shutting down for 37,000 deaths. It's absolutely mind-boggling, you guys. And that is not a lot of deaths. I know it sounds like it because you don't normally hear those numbers, but 50,000 die every year from the flu virus. And people keep saying that these numbers are like, oh, it's all in one month. That is not true. This is over the whole course, which they're finding out it started in November 2019. So those are the deaths they're counting. This is not over the last month. So look at the facts. Read your numbers correctly. Don't regurgitate wrong information. Like, get yourself educated on the real facts. The CDC just put some new facts out today. Go check it out. And that's the Center for Disease Control. They're the ones that just came out with the numbers of the 37,000. And that um, the 60,000 was only if you counted everyone that already had pneumonia and was going to die. So that's what we're talking about, where they've been exaggerating the numbers. And you guys, you just really need to just go look for yourself. You don't have to listen to me, people. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Great. Go look for yourself and don't listen to what news people or news articles are saying. You realize, like, people always are biased. There's no such thing as unbiased. If you write an article or if you're on a news channel and you're saying something, you are biased because, for one thing, you're biased for whatever organization you're working for in the sense of if you're on one channel, a lot of them tend to be more Democrat, other ones tend to be more Republican, depending on that. But then also... Um, you're biased to your sponsors, whoever is sponsoring the um, program. So, like, you couldn't say anything if it was negative. Like, if your sponsor was something like diapers, you couldn't say something negative about the diapers, you know, if it was Huggies or whatever, um, because that's your sponsor, even if some news came out. So that would be biased. And then the other thing is every individual is biased when they report a story or the news because even if they don't mean to they're going to give their opinion even in their tone you like even if they try to act like completely monotone but you'll know when they feel strongly about one thing or another it's just human nature we can't hide our opinion you'll see oh, oh you know whatever and then you know how they feel about that thing so there is no unbiased so when you are looking at things like 
news articles and things that are written, they have an agenda always. And we, their agendas are always different. So I'm not saying there is a specific agenda, but they have an agenda. So be careful when you're reading things that are written that are um, editorial. Um, you have to make sure you're reading the, the statistics and the facts then you won't get mixed up in these crazy exaggerated things of like they like to use big adjectives that don't really mean anything like the most deadly virus really because not that many people have died and most people are recovering the the only virus without a cure really because no virus has a cure I mean like these things are like they'll just say things that are I don't know if that's what they said but I'm just saying example you know where it's like really dramatic where you're like or um, oh, guess what, you guys? Millions of people have been affected now, but guess what? Millions have recovered. Millions have recovered in the world. <sighs> but they'll say millions affected. Yes, and millions have recovered. And only thousands have died. So you really got to make sure you're not falling into the traps of the that's the hoax that's where we're saying yes there's a regular flu virus but the hoax is what the media did and this uh, dramatization of it all right guys i'm gonna get off here um i'm about to make some breakfast oh yeah it's fried chinese so oh um i'll I'll get in a, a little bit of that before i jump off it's always good for me to talk health before I jump off but um people uh rag on me a lot for um my being too thin or my voice and um I was uh, uh, bulimic for 15 years is why my voice sounds like this this is way better than it used to sound you guys this is like a huge improvement and every day it's improving um three years ago you could I couldn't do this because it would crack all the time when I talked and it was so quiet but then it would like crack every time I tried to talk um so that's why I sing. I'm, I'm trying to improve my voice. I'm in no way a singer. I just enjoy it. I just have a blast. But the way I recovered from bulimia, which was very hard, you guys. I mean, it was in no way an easy battle. I was sick for a year straight and then even longer than that. But the first year was just sick nonstop. That's where we spent most of our money. We had saved up quite a bit of money, but I was not able to work very much for about a year. I mean, I worked, but very little. So I had to spend most of my savings um, recovering. Um, And I would scour the internet to find solutions because everything I was eating was making me sick. Um, And it turned out it was because I had candida overgrowth, which candida is a fungus that we have um, on the inside of us. Everyone has it, but when you eat a lot of sugary foods, um, antibiotics cause it, um, uh, the GMOs, um, all this artificial stuff, all this crappy stuff that they they love all that. In a way, they love the bad food. They're a fungus, so they they love moldy things. They They like dark, dingy, like like your worst of food is what fungus likes and they love caffeine too um and then they they live in your fat cells but they they um live off of they eat the sugar and so they give you really intense salt and sugar cravings and like you get really really tired and bloating and my um uh, thing that i figured out was i bloated insane so if you Stop believing me if you did it for a certain amount of time. You know, everyone's different. Mine, I did for 15 years. So when I stopped, my stomach would bloat every time I ate. Like, if I were to eat, it would be like I was nine months pregnant. It would go, it still does it once in a while um, because I still struggle with it a little bit, but not nearly as bad. But like, no matter what I ate, my stomach would go out like, and like to where it was like gonna burst. Like, it looked like it was about to have a baby, you know, where it was so tight and it would hurt. It would be so painful. And that, so I would just scour the internet and read about everything. That's when I first learned about gluten and about dairy and all the things that we cut out. And so what we do is we do all organics, gluten-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, alcohol-free, basically sugar-free. We only get our sugar from uh, the leafy greens. It would be the only source of carbs and, and garlic. Um, and then... Um, no artificial anything, and no caffeine. And the caffeine is the big one that people don't understand. I I actually had some clients yesterday. I was telling them I didn't drink caffeine, and they're just like, what? Um, 
because it's just so prevalent in our society and it's the thing that most people um, don't account for that where they're probably gaining weight because the problem with caffeine is it makes your body produce it extra insulin which insulin tells your body to store fat so how it does that is when caffeine what it does is it's a suppressant so it numbs your senses and it makes you feel not as tired and not as full but you really are still those things and if, if you guys have heard me say this much time i know some of you have heard me say this that have been watching but um i'm saying this for the new people um so it, it dulls your senses so then you don't feel as hungry and tired but you really still are but the other uh, hormone that it dulls that is a bad thing is your hormone for insulin and the problem is then it stops producing as much so when your insulin is not regulating as much then your blood sugar rises because your insulin reg- um, regulates your blood sugar well when your blood sugar rises then your body wants to produce more insulin. So then you produce more insulin, but then once the caffeine wears off, you have all that other insulin that was just kind of sit and chilling for a minute, starts producing again. And the problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat. And it also tells you to be like in a lethargic kind of um, hibernation mode. So it's not what you want to do, and that's what people are doing on a daily basis. And then what they have to do is then once their caffeine wears off, they're feeling even more now extra tired and now even more insulin. So it's making them more tired, so then they do more caffeine. And then year after year, that's where those added pounds are coming from because people don't even realize it's coming from the caffeine where they're like, where I'm trying to eat this and that and I've been really watching and then they're just downing caffeine like crazy and um, people go well how do you know that well I like I said when I had my bulimia when I was recovering I started taking out things and then I found that each thing made me uh, feel better not bloat as much and the final thing was the caffeine like I tried everything and I was still having so many issues and I kept reading that caffeine was and I was like oh I didn't want to let it go because I was the biggest coffeeaholic of anyone that knows me and everything anything caffeine monster drinks this Red Bulls Rockstar you know five hour energy anything anything I could down with caffeine that was my thing and um so I finally said okay and it was tough but then the pounds just started dropping and I said whoa it really does affect and then Jerry Rich did it with me too so we watched he lost um since we've been doing this diet he lost uh, over 125 pounds we stopped weighing him at when he had lost 125 pounds which I would say he's probably lost a good 20 or 30 since then too so he's probably lost about 150 pounds um since we first you know since i when i stopped my bulimia he was um also doing bulimia but not as much as me so he was just getting heavy because like i would be eating all day and he would throw up a little bit but he would digest more so he was getting fat as i was staying thin because i was throwing it up you know i threw up everything and then you know he wasn't as good of bulimic in a sense so he kept getting fatter and fatter and then i realized that's not fair to my husband either you know my addiction was making him even fatter and unhealthy so we um, decided to get healthy together but it took a while and the final thing was the caffeine and now people go like how are you so thin i'm like cut out the caffeine and you will be shocked but it's hard because you're very addicted if you're drinking caffeine on a regular basis you are highly addicted and it's a very addictive substance we um don't really act like it is we're kind of like treated like oh nothing but it's highly addictive and you will find out you will get all kinds of withdrawals like headaches and you'll be extremely tired and you'll feel depressed but you'll get through it and then you'll feel amazing because Caffeine was just an artificial energy anyways because it wasn't even giving you energy. You were just thinking you had more energy because you were uh, numbing your senses, but you weren't really getting any more energy. So that's why later you were feeling even more tired. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to go make some, um, what we eat is um, organic beef burgers for pretty much every meal. (laughs) It's funny, we don't get sick of them. Same thing over and over. And it's delicious every meal. It even tastes different because I make it homemade. I cook everything homemade. We do not eat anything anywhere anymore. Like, that's why um, we can get in a real bind too when we're out and about if we haven't cooked because we can't just grab something when we're out. There's no options for us anywhere um, because we have it so strict where, you know, I want to know what's in all the ingredients. 
um, including all the spices and everything, so I cook it myself. And I use organic for everything, including all my spices. Um, so I make organic beef burgers with collard greens and kale and garlic. And that's what we eat for every meal. And we drink water and uh, sparkling water. Um, I have a Whole Foods order coming this morning, but I need to go to the gas station because we are like pretty much out of water, which seriously most people are not drinking enough water that is one of the best things to make you feel better is just drink water and I know it's not fun water just never sounds like fun you're like juice or water or soda you always choose the juice or soda you know but if you really get tired of drinking water try sparkling water and don't go for those flavors you can't do like the lemons and limes because those are artificial flavorings and those are going to cause you problems too similar to the um, caffeine but your body doesn't know what it is so it's going to produce insulin even if it's not getting the regular sugar it's going to think it did so you're going to have a similar problem as the caffeine but um sparkling water is a great change up where it's just a little bit of a difference and it's got the bubbles so it's like if you like soda it you know can give you that sensation but yeah avoid those flavors um but we do my favorite is Gerald Steiner which is from Germany and then uh and then Topo Chico's, which are from Mexico, and then Pellegrino's. And my least favorite is Perrier's. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. I used to not like any of them, and now I have, like, I know, like, which I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not, oh, okay, that's my life. So this morning, hopefully, they deliver me some um, Gerald Steiner's, but we'll see. It just depends on if they have it. when, Because you can order it, but by the time the shopper shops, the stuff can be gone. So it's always interesting to see what you get by the time they shop. That's the unfortunate thing with the Whole Foods order versus regular Amazon. Like Amazon Fresh, once you selected it, it's out of inventory. But with Whole Foods, you can order. And now sometimes they, they want you to order a day in advance. But by the time the shopper goes everything's gone that you had on your order because it's not put aside when you order it it's put aside like before they deliver it um so it's it's so weird right now with all this crap with the delivery it's just getting out of hand but um i was lucky i got an order this morning yes but i need to go to the gas station because we are like out of water and i need to make some stew so we do not drink the tap water here in las vegas it's not good to drink i don't know if you guys have ever been here it's really nasty it tastes terrible too it's got a horrible flavor i used to drink the tap water in california growing up we always did but not here in vegas so we have to buy um spring water and just you know for everything for cooking and everything because you can't use the water here it's disgusting they say it has a lot of um hormones in the water too like a lot of estrogen it's crazy anyways okay i'm gonna jump off and i will catch you guys later have a good weekend, Saturday.